Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Wednesday, December 21st, 2016. Let's jump right into it. And uh, I had to get a good chuckle this morning and last night. Uh, I was a little late with the uh, news episode and got some chuckles out of apparently how pale I was looking in the video. Now, I did add some additional lighting. I assure you, I am not a vampire, the undead, Vlad the Impaler. No, uh, just very freaking pale with a lot of lighting, which I have toned down. So the lighting should be a bit more subdued and more, uh, you know, fleshy tones to prove that I am, in fact, not a vampire. So there's that. Uh, next up, no Oculus Touch, guys. Take a look at the screenshot. Uh, I had waited probably about an hour and a half near the end of the day thinking, okay, well, I'm not going to miss the UPS guys. They got a really bad habit in, you know, the delivery guys around here of not knocking on the door, just right away filling in the card, you weren't home, so they don't have to deliver, which irritates the snot out of me. I wasn't going to let that happen. And then I checked the tracking again and realized it was all a moot point. Anyways, because expected delivery isn't until Thursday, December 29th, which is next week. Holy Hannah. So we've got two stat holidays here. The Monday and Tuesday are going to be stat holidays. I don't believe the courier companies are working. I could be wrong. Maybe they are. But if they aren't, let's assume conservatively they aren't. I've got four business days left for it to get to me from... Apparently today, the last location, if you read further down, Louisville, Kentucky. So four days to get from Louisville to me here in Vancouver on the West Coast. Hopefully it doesn't get held up in customs. And I just, if it could show up for Gaming Friday, I'd be ecstatic. But I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm just going to assume it is going to be next week. That way I'm not disappointed. And if it shows up early, hell, even better, right? Let's talk about Serious Sam real quick. So Serious Sam VR first encounter. Uh, I mentioned it in the game, but then I went and mentioned it in some notes, you know, again, because it was missed by some people. Uh, one person even contemplating returning the game when there are more options than just the smooth locomotion. For example, there's a teleport system in there. There is all kinds of degrees of chunkiness for turning, so it doesn't have to be even smooth, fast turning. You can slow that right down. Basically, there should be an option for almost everyone. If you like FPS games, you know, I'll go on record as saying you should be okay with this game, unless I suppose you have the worst extreme motion sickness where you're almost at that point where VR might not be for you, period, then perhaps you might have an issue. But I thought they did a fantastic job of catering to everyone, option-wise. So um, if you want me to go into more detail on specifically what those options look like, let me know, and I will try to do that. Other than that, I've been enjoying the game. It's been just awesome to play an FPS game at FPS speeds. It's been a while, like Doom 3, and that wasn't an official release. And Doom 3 is more, you know, deliberately paced slower. Uh, Serious Sam is in-your-face paced fast, so you can't really compare the games uh, in that sense. You can compare the fact that they're both smooth movement, which I think works brilliantly, um, but again, with this one, you do have other options if smooth mo uh, motion isn't for you. All right, first story. Smart Solution makes handheld VR cinematography easy with a real virtual camera. Now, this is very cool. Uh, video effects professional Kurt Gartner, he's been pioneering new ways to make capturing virtual worlds as compelling as filming in the real world. And he's kind of outdid himself with this. Just goes to show you, you don't always need to buy an expensive off-the-shelf solution. Sometimes do-it-yourself can work just as well. Now, what he'd been doing is emulating that held, handheld camera look by using a third Vive controller to manipulate a virtual camera inside the virtual world. 
But filming this way is difficult because the controller doesn't have a viewfinder. So Gartner solved that problem by using a smartphone to act as the viewfinder for the virtual camera. So it still requires basically a custom build of whatever VR software you happen to be using uh, so that uh, it's able to project multiple camera views in a single frame, including an angle which will be the view of a virtual camera that's essentially attached to the extra Vive controller. Rendering out a 4K frame divided into multiple views means that each view can still be captured at a sharp 1080p by cropping away the other views. Altogether, the rig now works like a handheld camera, except instead of filming the real world, the viewfinder shows a portal into the VR world. Even rendering multiple views at 4K and running the screen streaming and capturing software, Gartner says that the whole system is still hitting the crucial and critical 90 frames per second. So very, very cool. And uh, they mentioned in the article here, and I would agree, no doubt thanks to a powerful PC managing it all. Absolutely. I don't think you're going to get by with, um, you know, a Core 2 Duo, for example. No, absolutely not. But very cool. Again, do it yourself. Can provide solutions. Next up, Axon VR, building a haptic holodeck powered by NVIDIA PhysX. Now, we've talked about these guys before with their full body haptic solution for VR, uh, but they are on their way to bringing their technology to an even wider audience. They announced today via an official NVIDIA blog post that the company's fledgling haptic engine is actually built on top of NVIDIA's PhysX which is a middleware SDK that provides GPU acceleration for complex real-time physics simulations. And if you've ever used physics in a game, um, I would say the first few instances I wasn't really impressed, but there were some games where physics can absolutely take explosions and particle effects and just bodies flying all over the place and objects all over the place to the next level. Now, uh, Axon VR's all-in-one haptic solution is aiming to combine an exoskeleton walking platform and haptic suit that provides simulated pressure, hot and cold sensations. So not only can you walk around VR, you'll be able to feel VR as well. And all of that is accomplished by what they're calling their proprietary HaptX textile that is said to deliver the feel of texture, shape, motion, vibration, and of course, temperature of virtual objects. Now, as ambitious and captivating as the early prototypes may be, a hardware platform can only be as good as its software base, and that is where the NVIDIA PhysX basically enters the picture. So Axon VR's Haptex SDK includes a plug-in for basically the two main engines that are being used for VR, which of course, Unity and Unreal Engine, and they maintain that the content creators can use existing 3D assets and add haptic properties and effects with little or no modification of the physics-based Haptex SDK. So fancy way of saying a lot of that essentially is going to be offered out of the box without customization or tweaking required. Now, they can use existing 3D uh, assets, as I mentioned, uh, PhysX Acceleration itself is supported across the game engines we talked about, Unreal Engine and Unity. In terms of hardware, GPUs, the GeForce 9 series, 100 series, 900 series, all with a minimum of 256 megabytes of dedicated GPU memory. Next news story, HTC launch Viveport Arcade, partnering with Leak VR to open thousands of locations. Now, we have reported that HTC has not just been putting all their eggs into the home consumer basket. They've been doing a lot of work and are on target to open close to a thousand virtual reality arcades within China. Uh, they hope to open thousands more by the end of 2017 in both China and Taiwan, uh, which is amazing. And the key is going to be not just to have that additional hardware out with the VR arcades, 
but the software component through Vive to be able to circulate new games. Because let's face it, they're not going to be able to run the same arcade games, you know, forever. That was always the key to arcades in the 80s and 90s was to cycle games. Obviously, the popular games stuck around a bit longer. The not so popular ones would get cycled in and out and you constantly have fresh arcade games to play. And that's the same idea that they're going with here. HTC wants to ensure that there's new and exciting software fairly frequently. So all of that is not just going to grow VR on the consumer side of things, but absolutely commercially via these arcades, hopefully. And that's going to be the key. Are they going to be able to sustain themselves in China? And I've been watching some interesting YouTube channels, people that live in China, and, you know, there's some dynamics going on and some real estate uh, bubbling, whether you're on the, the side that believes it's going to burst at some point or think they can continue to ride that for a while. Um, they may have issues. And if they do, how would that impact the virtual reality arcade scene, right? A lot of those, are they leased buildings? Are they purchased buildings? That remains to be seen. Next news story. Jason Rubin. And I'm not going to pick on Jason uh, even jokingly like I did last time. Although I may keep this quote around for a while. But uh, according to him, the next 12 to 24 months are where the real creativity is going to happen for VR content. Now, he was on stage with Price. And the two of them together, giants of the video game industry... Founded Insomniac, Naughty Dog, uh, Price remained as Insomniac's head, but we know Ruben has kind of gone in a different direction and uh, is currently head of content at Oculus after selling Naughty Dog to Sony in 2001 and is basically involved in the VR side of things. Now, they took stage at VRX to participate in what was originally going to be a very informal conversation but basically became, as the article points out, an in-depth look at the highs and lows of VR game development. And I like what Ruben had to say. He said, I don't think we've quite struck gold yet when it comes to the content that consumers want to buy for VR. The next 12 to 24 months are where the real creativity is going to happen in VR. These are the experiences that will truly strike the consumer, and that's where greater hardware adoption is going to start happening. He elaborated, we don't believe it's this year that mass adoption will take place, and we don't believe it's next year, but we do think it's coming. And he elaborated that at Oculus, they subscribe to a hockey stick outlook for the VR industry. And everyone probably knows what a hockey stick looks like, but it's a gradual slant with then an extreme curve for the blade of the stick. So that's kind of how they compare the industry. And he says that, in thinking of that hockey stick, they fully expect the industry to scale very slowly at first before rocketing to extreme mass market success in the future. However, this timeline may be less optimistic than some might think. And that's where he talked about probably not being this year and next year. But it's that old catch-22 that we've talked about so many times where you're not going to get the adoption rate if you don't have the games. And I think we're starting to see a lot of those early investments start trickling in. Now, are we behind expectations where even I thought we would be? Yeah, I thought we would have seen some more titles. Now, don't get me wrong. Stuff like Serious Sam, I think those are definitely good moves, but let's face it, it's a 15-year-old game, and as much fun as I'm having with it, I would rather, if possible, play a game that is months old as opposed to 15 years old. But look, if Serious Sam can do a couple of important things, if it can show that, you know, there's a market for reskinning of some older games, I don't think we'd tolerate a VR market that was purely that just you know, fresh coat of paint on old games. But if that was a subset, in other words, new games are coming out, 
maybe few and far in between initially, and that starts ramping up. As long as we've got filler in the form of some of these older games redone in VR with better graphics, I think most of us would be okay with that. Um, as long as it's not the primary type of game. It's got to be a subset and a smaller subset for sure, because let's, let's face it, we want the new stuff as well. All right, next news story, YouTube 1.09 update on the PlayStation 4 adds PlayStation VR support. Now, the key with this is the fact that you're going to be able to launch YouTube within your HMD. You don't have to do that whole rigmarole that you do now, putting it on a memory stick and changing and swapping and converting. HMD on, launch YouTube, launch 360 video, done. So very, very cool. And uh, there's, there's a pretty decent selection. I had a look yesterday at what was available on YouTube 360 wise. And uh, yeah, there's some strange stuff out there, admittedly. But there's some really cool stuff, especially documentary. Uh, I'm a huge documentary, nature documentary buff. And there's definitely some amazing 360 content for that out there. Next and last news story. This has to do with the medicinal side of virtual reality. Now, this is not a peer-reviewed study. This hasn't been, you know, subjected to all kinds of, uh, you know, variable testing. It's just one example. And one example where a woman who initially did not want to get an epidural, uh, you know, during her labor and her childbirth... As the pain increased and her labor ended up taking a lot longer than anyone expected, she asked for the epidural. And the doctor basically asked her if she'd be willing to try a substitute, essentially a virtual reality HMD with a meditative app. She agreed, and in this example, it worked. And the application that she used, and it was essentially Gear VR, was called Applied VR. And Applied VR president Josh Sackman, he describes it as combining soothing sounds, music and visuals with real-time instructions to guide a person through a meditative process. And the doctor, Dr. Anderson, basically said the following, that the patient was in VR for about two hours, so again, not the 10-15 minutes that a lot of people in the media like to throw around as kind of being that limit of VR. Here's another example, two hours. Uh, according to Anderson, the end result was a healthy, successful delivery. So obviously caution in the form of, look, this would need to be repeated. Uh, it sounds positive. It sounds like a way to, you know, avoid maybe epidurals where they might not be needed. And if it can do that, and it can do it in a way that doesn't jeopardize mom's health, baby's health, I'm all for it. All right, guys, that is it for the news. Off to some more gaming, uh, including the other two videos. And I'll explain the ROM extract game. The reason I'm holding off on that was I want the touch controllers, bottom line, for that game. I don't want to do it any other way, and I want to do it on the Rift. The other game, Push for a More, had some other issues, and I've purposely put that aside for a couple of days to basically not completely taint my outlook on the game. I want to be as constructive as possible. If the dev happens to watch it, um, yeah, and we'll get to that. So look forward uh, to that. As always, guys, cheers, and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.